members of the legislature, and to the distinguished chair of the Appropriations Committee, I would have a question or two in order that my education might be improved. Senator Heideman, this bill has been offered in the past. Is that correct? Senator Heideman, will you yield to a question? Uh, we had the bill up uh, prior. I think it made it a general file. Is that a that yes, Senator Heideman? Will you yield to a question? Yes, I will yield to a question. Thank you. <laughs> Senator Heideman, and I think this is a yes or no question also. Has this bill been before us prior to today in a previous session? Yes. Senator Heideman, that bill did not pass into law. Is that correct? If it did, we wouldn't need this bill today, would we? Yes. Can I expand? I didn't understand you. Y yes, it, it did not pass into law. Could I expand a little bit? Certainly. Uh, I had offered this bill as an amendment to a, uh, a bill that Senator Baker had last year. Uh, it was getting close to noon, and I think there was questions at that time, and I believe they might have been directed from you. Uh, so at that time, I decided uh, to pull the bill as not to jeopardize Senator Baker's bill, and uh, because of time constraints, we ran out of time last year. It was never brought back up again. Very good, and that's who I recollected also, Senator Heideman. But, you know, when you reach my age, you are not sure whether what you are recollecting really occurred or whether something is being manufactured in your mind. Senator Heideman, this bill mentions a single axle vehicle. Is that vehicle a truck? Oh, you're okay. Uh, we would presume it's a truck, but it just, uh, I don't know if it actually says single axle. It says two or fewer, I believe. Two or fewer. So if you have fewer than two, how many would you have? Re could you repeat that for me? Yes. Here are two fingers. If I have fewer than two fingers, how many do I have? would be one. I would agree. Studies have been made, and this is a slight digression, about people who lived during the Stone Age or cave days, and naturally there was speculation as to whether they could count, and the speculation based on various information they could devise or derive from the evidence that seemed to be available was that cave men, they never talk about cave women, Cave men could not count, but they could count beyond one. They knew the difference between one and more than one. I'm having difficulty with this bill because I want you to tell me what kind of vehicle has a single axle, and we've established that single means one. What kind of vehicle on the highways has a single axle? First of all, what is an axle? Uh, an axle is something that runs from one side of the vehicle, the way I understand it, to the other. One minute. It with runs from one side of the vehicle to the other? With, uh, with a set of wheels on each side, and in between it is what I call the axle. Okay, so it's... It's something that connects two wheels. What kind of vehicle on the highways of Nebraska has one axle? Besides a unicycle, probably none that I could think of. So unicycles would be allowed to exceed this weight limit currently? Well, um to maybe clarify things a little bit. I believe the bill does say any truck with no more than two axles. We actually, I don't believe it states anywhere in here that we talk about single axle. So what does this bill mean in line eight when it says any single axle? 
It's not my bill. Time. I'm just trying to get an understanding. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Senator Fulton. The chair recognizes the gentleman from Omaha District 11. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Members of the legislature, I'd like to resume my discussion with Senator Heideman. Senator Heideman, did you draft the language in this bill? Senator Heideman, language? will you yield to a question? Yes. Senator Heideman, is this the same language that was in the amendment you offered last session? No, it's not. What is different about it? We talk more about a single axle. We had changed that word and we put any truck with no more than two axles carrying green or other seasonal hardy pro product. We, we switch it around to try to make it just a little bit more clear for every, uh, all members of the body to understand. Okay. Well, one member is still asking questions. Senator Heideman, is the term single axle vehicle in the new language? Don't cheat. You drafted it. It's not very long. Is the term single axle vehicle in your new language? I don't believe it. I could be wrong. I don't believe it is, though. I believe they talk about it in statute, but I don't believe that it's in my new language. Well, why are we discussing single axle vehicle? Is it because I use that term? I bl well, if I mentioned it, I might have mentioned single rear axle uh, in my opening, but uh, no, I, I mean believe the attachment. I mean the addition of the word vehicle. Who added that word vehicle to the term single axle, which is what you have in your bill? You I'm didn't say single axle vehicle, did What's you? That? You didn't use the term single axle vehicle. So why are we talking about a single axle vehicle? While you cogitate on that, I'd like to ask Senator Fulton a question. Mr. Speaker, I'd like to ask Senator Fulton a question if he will yield. Senator Fulton, will you yield to a question from Senator Chambers? I will. And Senator Fulton, although there was a man with a name such as yours who dealt with the steam engine, there will be no steam rolling here. Senator Fulton, why did you discuss single axle vehicle? The reason I discussed single axle vehicle is because I believe that was the question you asked of Senator Heideman. Did you look at the new language in Senator Heideman's bill, which would be the underlined language? Uh, I did look at the language. However, uh, my response to the question of single axle vehicle was prompted by your question. Thank you. Now, you said a single ax axle vehicle could be, what did you say that would be, a vehicle in tow? That is what I said, yes. Would this be like a trailer or what? Actually, I couldn't. I, it, it could be one of uh, several vehicles in tow, but what I have seen um, is a uh, is the back end of a pickup truck being towed by another uh, moving vehicle with a and, load. And is that piece considered a vehicle? It's a good question. I I do not know. Um, I am merely suggesting that it may be considered a vehicle. Thank you, Senator Fulton. And I appreciate him trying to give assistance to Senator Heideman in this discussion. Senator Heideman, is there a way you could more clearly say what it is that you're talking about? There, there, there might be, I would almost go back to the point that the people that deal with this on a daily basis, both both carrier enforcement and, and the people that would use this exemption understand one the, minute the, the language and, and are able to function with that I, I know it is somewhat confusing uh, language but but uh, we, we work this on an extended period of time and we try to make it as clear as possible uh, before we move forward and this is what we came up with when you say we, who all is included in that term we, you and who else? Uh, bill drafting, we uh, talked to uh, some people. Are they experts on one, one axles? On one axle, whatever they are, are they, is bill drafting an expert on that? Uh, who did you talk to who has expertise? Because you said 
all those involved will understand this. Who did you talk to who would have expertise and told you they understand this and what it means? Standing here right now, I probably couldn't recall uh, a time. Name. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Gross weight. In the, the way I interpret this statute is that only a single axle of that vehicle can carry gross weight up to 20,000 pounds. Does that answer your question about single axles? Senator Chambers, will you yield to a question from Senator Fisher? Yes, I will. Senator Fisher, you said that's how you interpret that statute. I don't have it before me, so what language in the statute are you interpreting to mean what you're telling me? In other words, does the statute actually say what you're telling me, or are you giving your view of what is meant by what that statute says? Senator Chambers, I can read you uh, the part of the statute that I think applies here. Okay. And then uh, you as an attorney can tell me if I'm correct in my uh, interpretation that this is, um, since it's being referenced in the bill, this is what I believe the, the bill is saying. I will read from uh, section 60-6294, number two. No wheel of a vehicle or trailer equipped with the solid rubber tires shall carry a gross load or excess of 10,000 pounds on any highway, nor shall any axle carry a gross load in excess of 20,000 pounds on any highway. Does that clarify it for you, Senator Chambers? And in this bill, this new language that we have says exceeds the maximum load permitted by the section you read by 15% on any single axle. And now the single axle that you were referring to said what? Would you the read single, that? Okay. Would you like me to read it again? Yes, I would. No wheel of a vehicle or trailer equipped with the solid rubber tires shall carry a gross load of in excess of 10,000 pounds on any highway, nor shall any axle carry a gross load in excess of 20,000 pounds on any highway. So it would be 15% above that 20,000. That would be correct, Senator, which is 3,000 pounds. Now, when it says, did it say a solid rubber wheel? in that statute that you read correct and that's what we're talking about here those trucks that have solid rubber wheels what is a truck that has a solid rubber wheel because I think that's what you read in the statute yes. there. so we're talking about trucks with solid rubber wheels or are we not? They're solid. It, I'm Does not, that mean they don't have air in them? It has. I'm sorry, Senator. I skipped a, in here, too. I skipped a word. I apologize. It's pneumatic, too, which is the air in the tires. Okay. It's One clear minute. Now. It's is it clear, clear now? what you Thank you, Senator. You tend to fluster me, so I skipped. I'm sorry. Okay. Thank you, Senator Chen. I wish to speak regarding the Langemeyer Amendment, but I wish to speak to Senator Heideman. Senator Heideman, will you yield to a question from Senator Chambers? Yes. Senator Heideman, have you had a chance to look at Senator Langemeyer's amendment? Uh, we're just starting to do that right now. We was not aware that this was going to happen, so. All right. Then I'm not going to ask you about the amendment as such, but kind of what it touches on and Senator Langemeyer's comments. In the context of the statute read by your seatmate, Senator Fisher, is it your understanding that when we're talking about a single axle, that is the limit of the amount of weight that can be borne by one axle? Is that your understanding of what that means? I believe so. I didn't hear you? Yes. Okay. Now, if there are two axles, let's say so it's easy for me that the load limit for a single axle is 10,000 pounds. If you have two axles, the load limit 
would be 20,000 pounds, you would multiply that maximum amount by the number of axles that you have on the vehicle. Is that your understanding? I wasn't 100 percent for sure on the question. So Let me I ask it again. You, uh, you have agreed, I think, that when the term single axle is used in the statute you are amending, that term single axle is telling you the maximum amount of weight that can be carried by that axle. Yes. So if the maximum amount is 10,000 pounds, if you have two axles, the maximum amount would be 20,000 pounds. Would that be correct? Uh, actually, the Were you they, talking in your language about two axles? That's why I'm using two. Any truck with no more than two axles, so I'm trying to stick with what you use. So if one axle can bear 10,000 pounds, if there are two axles, how much can be born legally? 20,000? They, there's some distance deals that get involved, but the going back to what I understand uh, by rules of the road, they talk about four axles at 34, five at 34, six at 34, you get up to nine axles, it's 39. Ten axles is at 40. 40 what? Thousand. Ten axles would be 40,000, which means each one can bear 4,000, right? I'd have to get some clarification just a second. There's, there's different rules as far as dip distance and how many axles the way I'm looking at it here. Okay, so let's stick with what you have. Your new language says any truck with no more than two right. axles. So let's limit it to two axles which you're dealing with. Front to back. Yep, because yep. that is where you're going to allow the load to be exceeded. Now is it your understanding that if this two-axle vehicle that you're talking about one minute is under a rule or formula which allows one axle to bear a certain amount of weight, then two axles would bear twice that amount. Is that correct or incorrect? The way I understand it, one axle right now can carry 20, two axles can carry 40, each axle would be Axel would be able to carry 15% over during this period of harvest time. Now, if you have a long bedded truck, it doesn't mean that the weight is evenly distributed, so actually over each axle there would be 20,000 pounds. It means that the total weight in that truck bed is 40,000 pounds, and all of it could be in the front part of the bed or the back part meaning each axle, in fact, has more than 20,000 pounds. No, sir. That couldn't be? No, sir. Then I'll wait and turn my light on and pursue it. Time. Legislature, I have to continue now because Senator Heideman may have had an opportunity to consult. Senator Heideman, have you had a chance to look at Senator Langemeyer's amendment? Senator Heideman, will you yield to a question? Actually not. I, no. Uh, which the one you that's up yield. now or the one that he's working on is that an you won't yield or you won't answer his question I will yield. you will yield thank you the record shall so reflect <laughs> okay so you haven't had a chance yet were you looking at what the question that I had asked you before where if the maximum load that can be borne by one axle is 20,000 pounds when you get to the two axles that you're talking about the maximum load would be 40,000 pounds, which would be exceeded by the 15 percent, but I don't want to get to what we're exceeding it by until we know for sure what it is that we're talking about. So would we be talking about 40,000 pounds being borne by this two-axle vehicle, this truck? 
There cannot be more right now, the way the statute, the way I understand it, more than 20,000. If you have to have a load, it has to be evenly distributed according to what the axles can handle, not only under statute, but according to gross vehicle weight. So then if you have this long truck bed, there must be, and you drew a line right in the middle of the front and the back, there would be 20,000 pounds on one side of that line and 20,000 pounds on the other side of the line because you've got two axles. Is that what you're saying? When you say the load must be evenly distributed, if you divided that truck bed in half, you would have 20,000 pounds in the front half and 20,000 pounds in the rear half. Is that what you're saying? Probably the way things work, though, if you put a line right in between both axles, there would still be more weight in the back axle because over the front axle is the cab. The cab is a lot lighter than probably whatever you're hauling. So at that time, you have more weight on your back axle than you do on your front axle. That's why when they manufacture vehicles, they don't have the axles load limited, load rated to as much as they do rear axles. So then there is a different amount that a front axle will be allowed to bear than a rear axle. Is that what you're telling me? You can only carry on your front axle what your vehicle is rated to carry. If it is, uh, some of these single axle trucks are probably only rated uh, between, most of them probably 12,000, some, th uh, some 9,000. There are some single axle trucks that probably might maybe modify to carry up to 16,000. Okay, one thing. Then you are talking about a truck with a single axle after all. Is that true? Single rear axle. A single rear axle. So you're saying that when you say single axle here, you're talking about a single rear axle, which can bear 20,000 pounds. Is that true? Is that what you're talking about? You can exactly, the way I understand it, maybe do it that way because if a truck ever comes up that is load rated in the front, to carry that 20,000, you probably couldn't exempt that axle at that time from doing that. It's what it's, it, it also goes back, there's more factors that carry into this, what goes back to what the vehicle is able to carry. One minute. Well, what are you talking about in this language you're offering us? What I am offering to you that you will be able to exceed the maximum load permitted by section 60-6.294 by 15% on any single axle and gross weight. And what is the amount listed in the section that you referenced? Is that where the 20,000 pounds comes from? That I would have to find out. So you're not sure what you're telling me? You're telling me that you're telling me something, but you're not quite sure what it is. Before I would start quoting, I want to make sure what it is. Okay, then I will put my light. Mr. Chairman, do I have one more time on Senator Langermeyer's amendment? You have one more opportunity to speak. Senator. Then I'm going to stop at this point and give him that opportunity and then turn my light on again. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Chambers. Senator Chambers, you're recognized to speak. Once again, you're the only light on at this time. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I thought we had gotten away from single axle, but now Senator Heidemann says he, in fact, does mean a single axle vehicle. I had conceded that in the earlier discussion, I injected the word vehicle into his new language because that word does not follow single axle, which is in his language. I attached vehicle to the end of it. Now he's saying that he does mean a single axle vehicle. When he describes this truck, the truck that he described has two axles, one in the back and one in the front. So how in the world can a truck that has two axles be described as a single axle 
vehicle. I'd like to ask Senator Heidemann a question or two now. Senator Heidemann, will you yield to a question from Senator Chambers? Yes. Senator Heidemann, I'm going to get away from the amount of weight until you had a chance to look at that other statute. Have you had a chance to look at that other statute that you had cited? Uh, briefly, I can try to explain this. Does it give an amount of weight in terms of poundage that this axle can bear? It goes back to no wheel or vehicle or trailer equipped with pneumatic or solid rubber tires shall gr carry a gross load in excess of 10,000 pounds on any highway, nor shall any axle carry a gross load in excess of 20,000 pounds on any highway. Okay, so a single axle on that vehicle can bear 20,000 pounds. If there are two axles, are there vehicles, which as Senator Dubois touched on, which will have two axles under that truck bed? Or was she misleading this city slicker, this greenhorn? Are there farm vehicles that have two axles under the truck bed? And they are called tandem axle trucks. She I don't care what they're called. Are there truck beds that have two? Yes, sir. And under the statute that you read, each of those axles is allowed to bear 20,000 pounds. Is that true? No, sir. That's not, not true? Not the way I understand it. I believe it's... Well, I'm going by what you read to me. Okay, well, I will, that's there's... all I'll ask you. Members of the legislature, I thought that Senator Heidemann read to me a statute which said that no single axle can bear more than 20,000 pounds. If a single axle can bear no more than 20,000 pounds, that's a way of saying it can bear as much as 20,000, but no more. So if you have two axles, then you can multiply the number of those axles by the amount of weight. So if one can bear 20,000, two can bear 40,000. That would have led me to the question that I'd asked earlier. As a matter of fact and reality, in one of these truck beds, there could be more than 20,000 pounds over a given axle, but the total amount of the load does not exceed 40,000 pounds. So if the truck is weighed, the conclusion could be that since you've got two axles and the weight is 40,000 pounds, it's in compliance with the law. You One wouldn't minute. have to divide what's in the front half of that truck bed and weigh it and get 20,000 pounds and then weigh what's in the front half and get 20,000 to be in compliance with the law. That's the question I wanted to ask, but I really can't get there, so I'm going to have to listen and see or watch and see how Senator Langemeyer's amendment will be voted on because it says two rear axles. So I'm going to listen and observe. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Senator Friend. You've heard the opening on LB 207. The chair recognizes the senior senator from District 11 in Omaha. Mr. President, I think I'm about to give Senator Flood, I'm at Senator Friend, I was looking at Senator Flood, a second vote on an Omaha bill. Senator Flood, why is it necessary that we do this in statute, did you say? I will not yield to your question. Senator Friend, I mean, would you Senator like to uh, yield to a question from Senator Chambers? If, Mr. Speaker, if Senator Chambers would like to address the um, senator from the 10th Legislative District right, you know, fairly close to his, I would be happy to, I would, I would be happy to yield. I want to make you happy, Senator Friend. Would you yield to a question on your bill? Yes, I will. Why did you say it's necessary that we do this by statute? States, according to state statute, Senator Chambers, right now, and I don't know if you have the bill in front of you. Yes, I do. If you go to page two, line 23, it says the compensation, well, and there are other, and there are other, um, 
areas where this is the case. It says the comp uh, compensation of the general manager and such employees shall be paid from fun The point here is on um, uh, lines 22, 23 and, and, and other areas where we're changing it, th the Metropolitan utility di Utilities District is required to call the way they've interpreted it and the way others have interpreted it, are required to call the particular person who's in a capacity of uh, chief executive officer, if you will, a general manager. They have to do that. That's the understanding. And, and why we, is that a problem? Well, I think it's been communicated to me and that it is a problem because when conversation uh, based on, you know, email, uh, letterhead, going all out, you know, across the country, uh, the way the Metropolitan Utilities District is trying to do business with organizations throughout this, throughout this nation, it, it causes confusion, Senator Chambers. And confusion in that uh, somebody might be getting a letter and, and on the other end and say, why am I talking to your, why am I speaking to your general manager in regard to this subject matter? Why am I not speaking to the person who is in charge of, the, of your organization? Well, why can't that person being questioned simply say, we called the CEO the general manager. A utility in Omaha? Yes, it is. Well, does, does OPP and, and, and other areas of... Uh, does OPPD deal with power? Yes. Well, why are you going to give power to MUD, which doesn't deal with power? Yeah, does I, MUD deal with water and gas? Yes. So why are you giving them power? I, I'm actually empowering them. But you didn't say empowering, did you? you said I, you I stand corrected. I, I, I am trying to empower the board of directors. I'm not trying to give them a... Now, may I ask you a question that might contain a suggestion? Since the term general manager is being stricken, perhaps we ought to strike the term general manager in line five on page two and use language that simply says the board may, when you have this appointed official, may designate this person with the title that MUD, that the board chooses and just get general manager off the table since it's not going to be used. Why, who drafted this bill? Well, um, the, the Urban Affairs Committee uh, legal counsel, uh, Senator Chambers, and this, ha we've seen this, uh, I believe, three times. Senator Bourne had the bill last year, and the Urban Affairs Committee amended it. Was there any reason for keeping the term general manager well, anywhere well, in the bill. Well, that's a very good question. And and the first, and when you brought that up, I, I was a little bit concerned because they may, there may be some, some significance there to leaving that particular um, uh, reference in on line five right there. But I, but I don't know the answer to your question off the top of my head. My, my guess is I don't, my guess is I don't think it would be a problem to strike that. Why don't you find out, and I won't offer an amendment now, but I think you could contrive some language that would make the bill a lot simpler. I Just say the board may d call this appointed individual by the title they choose or something like that, and then we don't even have general manager because either they're going to use that term or they're not. If using it causes confusion, and the purpose of this bill is to get rid of the confusion One and minute. get rid of the, the term general manager. All we're talking about in this bill is this top official who is going to be appointed. If some other person in the company is to be called general manager, they can call those lower ranking people whatever they choose without the statute making reference. We're not naming all of the individuals who may have a supervisory or administrative position, we're only talking about the top person in the company who will be appointed by the board. Is that true? 
My understand. I agree with your assessment. Okay, then I will see what you come up with by the time we get to select file. That's all I would have. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Senator Chambers. The chair recognizes the senator from Omaha's Legislative District 10. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, and uh, Senator Chambers, thank you. I, the, there, I agree with your assessment. I am going to check with uh, Mr. Statwald and uh, make sure that there isn't any specific reason that that reference on line five needs to be there. I don't believe, like I said, that it needs to be. But um, uh, let me, I, I understand your concern and uh, uh, would be happy to address it. With that, I would, I would ask, I would respectfully ask that you move this to select file before I, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Mr. President, I'd like to ask Senator Heidemann a question. Senator Heidemann, the bill does say that whoever is going to engage in this activity has to assume responsibility for accidents and quality of the hay and so forth. Is there anything that requires that person to show he or she is capable of responding in damages to anybody who may be harmed? Senator Heidemann, will you yield to a question from Senator Chambers? It just states, no, that you don't have to have proof. Uh, thank you if you're asking for, like, proof of insurance. Uh, this goes back to what, during a draft designation, they just have to, I think this even actually goes a little bit further than that, but they just have to assume liability, but they don't have to prove that they have liability insurance the way I understand it, if that's the question that you're asking. So the state, by this legislation, is granting a privilege to people who, in carrying out this activity, may cause serious harm or damage to an individual, maybe to a roadway, maybe to livestock, or any number of entities, yet there's not going to be any requirement that this person show that he or she can pay for the damage that might result? They just have to assume liability. I can... Of what value is it, and these are not designed to be trick questions, but to put things into the record and maybe game and parks people or others who are interested in this can provide some answers. What value is it for me to say that I assume responsibility for harm done to others if I'm judgment proof, meaning that I cannot respond in damages because I don't have anything with which to make whole anybody harmed by what I'm doing. Had that issue been considered by those who want this legislation? It, it may have been brought up in a conversation about as far as, you know, if, if someone gets uh, hit or causes damages to a sign or, or other things. Uh, in the discussion, farmers that would do this tend to, on the average, I can't guarantee you that each and every one will, but uh, a farmer will carry liability insurance so that if something happens, Senator, that they won't get themselves in a lawsuit so that they lose their farm. Well, far is, does ahead. that if they have liability insurance, does it cover activities such as this, which may not have been contemplated at the time the policy was issued? Usually a liability uh, policy, I would have to think, would cover this because farmers right now can travel up and down the state highway system. If they have an accident at that time or cause an accident at that time, that liability policy should cover. So but they're, it, when they're just driving up and down the highway, you might be thinking about traffic problems, but this is a brand new activity being specifically authorized by the state. And you don't have to give me a definitive answer, but I'd like you to get some information on that when you can. Another question that I have, becoming a bit less serious, because we've had some serious discussions this morning. Could we say that while the cattle are lowing, the cattle men are mowing? If you're knowing, here's what I want to <laughs> ask you also. How many axles must the mowing machine have? That's all I have. The serious question relates to the liability, if you can find something on that as we move forward. Thank you.